Reolink has just released a new camera that caters to the outdoors called the Keen Ranger PT. I can't wait to check this out. The Keen Ranger PT by Reolink is a wireless camera that uses 4G cellular network that can be used anywhere there's cell reception. With the ability to get a live view, you can control where you look right from your phone. The pan tilt feature allows you to get a 360 degree view using the PTZ button on the app. A 0.5 second trigger speed, 2K resolution, no glow LEDs. With Smart Detect, it knows the difference between a person and a vehicle and alerts you through push notifications. Paired with a solar panel, you never have to worry about changing out batteries. Oh, and if you didn't notice, it's camo. Hey guys, welcome to Jace Outdoors. I am Jace and I'm just going to review this camera by Reolink. Uh, I'm not being paid for this, this is just my honest opinion. And um, you know, I didn't hesitate to say yes onto this camera because I have used their other cameras and they've just been absolutely awesome and really just one of my favorite systems to run. So I'm really excited about this one just because it's, you know, uh, designed for the outdoors. Um, the whole thing's camo and uh, we'll jump into the features and see what it can do. But let's just jump right into the box. Opening the box, you're greeted with a packet containing the quick start guide and the instruction manual. Under that, there's the camo antenna, and there's the Keen camera itself and its camo. The camera mounting bracket, screws for the mounting bracket, a USB cable for charging, a camo strap if you don't want to use screws, and digging deeper, you have a camo solar panel with a camo solar panel mounting bracket and screws for that bracket. And that's everything that comes in the box. Did I mention that it's all camo? Uh, just go over a couple of things real fast. So it does come with a strap, which is really nice uh, if you're planning on hanging this in public land or you just don't typically carry a drill around with you. Uh, you can attach uh, this mounting bracket to the tree and run the strap right through these slots here and you use the strap. However, uh, to mount the solar panel, there's no way to do it without a drill. Uh, the the cord that they do supply with you is very long. I mean if you had to you could probably run it to the ground and set it on the ground although they don't recommend that. Uh, <laughs> you might run into all sorts of problems with that so you really can't mount the solar panel on there and I'll tell you this solar panel has been amazing. I've ran Reolink's other cameras uh, the Reolink Go PT, uh, the, the Reolink Go and the solar panel it's just been so awesome to not have to worry about batteries dying and they've just been great and they claim that these won't work below 32 degrees uh, but i have never had a battery issue with these cameras uh, all through winter i've had one up for about a year and a half and i had not didn't have to touch it at all yet even if the solar panel doesn't charge the camera under 32 degrees uh, the battery itself, I've had last up to seven weeks just without a solar panel. I charged the battery and just let it run, you know, using it here and there, not all the time. So, you know, the battery life is going to vary depending on how much you use it. But I got like seven weeks out of it. It could probably get you through the bulk of, of, of winter and just, you know, being cold and or the, those cloudy days. The mount they provide is pretty clever. If you plan on hanging this on a ceiling or even if you just have an overhead branch, uh, that you want to look down. So this camera can rotate 360 degrees so you can really look all around. If you put this flat up against a tree, well then when you look behind you, you're just you're looking at the tree. So if you can hang this straight down, uh, they do provide a way to do that and all you have to do is uh, slide this button here and then you're going to rotate it. It says open and close here. You just rotate that and then this will pop right out. And then these holes here is where you're going to put your mounting screws up there. So once you mount that to a flat surface, then you just come and screw this on and now it, it, it attaches like that. Put this back in, you just do it the opposite way. There's a little, little slots there, you just line that up and then turn it and it locks in there. And that's basically it for, for that, so let's throw the antenna on here real quick. And we'll see if we can't uh, get this fired up. So the next step, is going to be inserting the SIM card. Uh, they don't provide you a SIM card, so you have to do a little bit of your own research 
and at first I was kind of overwhelmed with that and I didn't know what to do and uh, there were so many different companies and so many different plans. I ended up, I started off with US Mobile but I ended up switching uh, just because I get more data from, from another company if you pay by the year, which I plan on using this all year because I just like to monitor the property for trespassers and not just the deer but you know uh, I'll set this up over the access lanes to see if I get anybody driving in like in the off seasons so uh, I want to run this all year long so I ended up going with a, a company called uh, Flexi Boom. they put out sim cards that are designed for trail camera use As a matter of fact when you go to the website uh, they have options in there because you only need a data plan you don't need talk and text and all that stuff so uh, they kind of cater to trail camera use and then you just have to pop out it is the nano sim now inserting the sim card i always just seem to have trouble uh, getting it in there with my fingers so in the uh, little kit here with your screws they have a, a reset pin uh, I just popped that out and helped me push that in there. To locate where the SIM card goes, you're just going to rotate the lens here until you see this little tab that says micro SD. Now they do supply you with a micro SD card, which is very nice. It's a 32 gig card, so it's really about all you need. Uh, comes with it, so that's awesome that they provide that. And then you're just going to stick your SIM card in the little slot there and this is where I have trouble so I use this to just help me push it in there you hear that little click and it locks in there so we'll make sure you close that up nice and tight so no water gets in there and then you're gonna flip it around and on the back side there's another tab that says power we're gonna turn this on and hope for the best <laughs> little red light comes on and this should probably take a couple minutes, I think. Then it starts flashing blue. I think it's connecting. It has to register the, the SIM card. So while this is doing that, the nice thing about the FlexiBoom is you buy the card and you don't have to worry about downloading an app. You basically will just put in your SIM card number online and then you can reload it from there. So just to give you an idea, I can get 24 gigs of data for $100 a year. So that comes out to two gigs a month for a little over eight dollars. Network connection succeeded. Awesome. So we are set and ready to go. So the next thing is going to be to add this camera to the Real Link app. Okay. So if you haven't already done so, you have to go to your Play Store, App Store, and download the Real Link app. I've already done that. I'm not really going to go through that. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's just download it. You're creating an account. You know, make a username, password. So you're going to open up your app and go to the home screen. To the top right here, you're going to hit that plus to add a new camera. So now it's asking to scan the QR code on the device. So on the camera, underneath on the bottom here, there is a QR code. We're just going to line that up. And it is connecting your device. So now you have to create a password for the device. Hit next, you're gonna name your device. I'm just gonna name this one Keen. Select scene indoor, outdoor. I'm gonna put it outside. Please note, blah, 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 blah. You don't wanna point it to a heat source. You don't wanna put it in a mirror. You don't wanna point it to frequently moving objects like a tree. So then it gives you a, uh, a QR code that you can share so you can share your camera with someone else if they have the same app you send them this QR code and then they can watch what you're getting on your app so they hit finish and then you go back to the home page and like I said I have all the other cameras um, and here it is so it's at the bottom it says keen nice and big at the top left plus the camera that I had named it was keen so I'm just gonna click on that and if I hit play over cellular data it should give me a live view of what I'm seeing now and there it is upside down <laughs> so when you put it up it'll be like this all right so I'll just go through some of the functions here real fast down on the bottom left you got a talk button so you can talk through this camera if you, you hit that you hit tap to talk and then your voice should come through the camera 
it's a little bit of delay and a little static when you're this close but i i have used that one time when i had a bear trying to climb the tree at the camera i was able to uh, go to the talk and scare that bear away but not something that i use too often so you hit your back button and then your ptz button here is this is where you can move the camera up and down and boy that goes pretty fast left and right so you can look all around super cool then your playback button so when it detects motion it records the clips and puts them here in your playback so now you can go back through here and highlight that clip and watch what you just had a video of and this is what I what I just did so even a live look if you log on and you see something happening it still is recording what you what you saw witnessed in live view so that's super cool um, I love how now they give you like a preview of the thumbnail so you don't have to really necessarily you know click on that and waste some of your data to you know watch that clip I can basically tell what it is if you look on the top right hand corner of that clip there's a little person running that means it detected a person and then the one where it's just kind of a hazy ball that means it just detected motion I didn't really recognize what it was this will also detect vehicles people and I would just love it being that this is an outdoor camera uh, it's camo it's good it's you know designed for the outdoorsman uh, I wish it could just detect animals like uh, there there's some cameras out there that can detect the difference between a doe and a buck uh, this would be so awesome if it could do that but maybe down the road and then let's just back out of here real fast and it's gonna go right back to the live view but we're gonna hit this little gear up here for your settings this is where all your information is so it comes with you know it's already charged at 46 percent so if you click display you can flip your image vertically you can flip it horizontally if you did have it sitting like this you can make it so that it's not upside down uh, quality uh, this is where you, you want to experiment just because you know you don't want to burn up too much of your plan too fast uh, I just leave everything at the defaults you know frame rate is at 15 is default the max bit rate I just leave it default the resolution there is only one option so that is what it is hit save um, alright so let's go back and then anti flicker I just I leave that to what it is day and night I always leave auto uh, you can have color black and white for night pictures scene is indoor outdoor I don't really know the purpose of that just yet so your brightness you can brighten the screen a little camera name you can place it where you want it to be um, it's kind of neat that they include that uh, watermark you can turn it off privacy mask so you can block out a section of that so if you have people watching you know you're sharing this camera with other people you can block out a section that you don't want them to see in there uh, never used it then brightness and shadows I'm just you know leave that to auto I, it seems to do fine PR motion sensor I mean I believe you'd want that on so just leave that on so you can come in here and have detection zones where you highlight an area and if it's getting motion in that section you can block that out and you won't get an alert which is pretty cool uh, sensitivity this is where you probably want to come in and uh, play around a little bit so there is smart detection uh, if it detects a person I'm gonna crank that up higher because if somebody's walking slow I want them to pick that up vehicle motion I would imagine you can leave the way it is and then there's an object size so filter out detection objects by its size so you can have a minimum objects um, you know moving objects that are smaller than this size it won't trigger the alarm so if I don't know if you have a rabbit that's running around all the time you make your detection zone bigger and it won't go off with that that rabbit that's that's kind of cool I don't know if it's something I'll play with because that's just I like to be notified anything that's moving around camera recording you want to leave on so push notifications if you want to be alerted right away when it detects motion 
you want to turn this on. When you turn that on, you will get another option that you can schedule. So if you don't want it going off at night or whatever, you can have it turn off. But email alerts, you can have it send you an email when it detects motion, and I believe it sends you a little thumbnail as well. Apparently that's basically about it, all the uh, important stuff anyway. So um, I'm going to just get this outside on a tree and we'll uh, run a few tests. Well, as you can see, this camera was super easy to set up. You just pop in your SIM card and uh, it connects, registers that SIM card, and then you add the camera to the app, name it. Uh, it's just, it's up and running in a couple minutes, so it's super easy to set up. And I'm just gonna hang this uh, on this tree here behind me, uh, just, just to run a few tests. I'm not gonna hang the solar panel right now uh, just for this demonstration uh, but I do want to make a couple of notes about the solar panel and in your instruction book they show you how you should set this you do want to set this on an angle of course it needs sunlight which they do provide a pretty lengthy uh, cable so that you can uh, you know either wrap it on the back side of the tree or just you know get it up high or whatever you need to get it uh, so you do want to place this on a, on a certain angle probably facing south uh, to get the most sunlight uh, and then when you plug this in there's a little tab here where you're going to plug this in at you just want to make sure that when you plug this in you'll see a little green light come on I did charge this battery I gave it a full charge uh, so that the solar panel doesn't have to work so hard right off the bat you want to make sure that this waterproof housing goes down in there you do not want water getting in there so just one thing I, I wanted to point out uh, another thing that I'll point out, if you're planning on screwing this to a tree, uh, I just learned that when you put this in, you want to make sure you come back and unloosen the screws at least, you know, every year. I went about a year and a half and I already had the tree growing out over the, the bracket here, so um, I had to break one of the screws off to get it out. Uh, I couldn't believe a tree would grow that fast, but anyhow, uh, or just don't tighten them so tight. You know, leave leave a little room. Also, unless you're pre-drilling your holes and then using a screwdriver with the screws that they provide, uh, they just haven't held up for me, so I ended up swapping out those screws. Other than that, really, there's not much to it. I'm just going to throw this up here on the tree real fast, and uh, we'll just run a few tests. Also, when setting this camera, you want to make sure that this camera is at least 7 to 10 feet off the ground. The sensor is designed that way to get your maximum distance uh, that it detects motion, it has to be up high. If you put this down low, try to get eye level with the deer, it's, uh, it's not going to work too well. Okay, so it has connected to the network and we're going to open up the app. I'm, I'm getting alerts already that it's detecting motion, but connection failed. That happens every now and then. I don't have great reception here. So sometimes you have to hit connect several times and there I am. So uh, let's just make sure that this works. And as you can see we can tilt up and down. Boy it goes, that thing moves fast. Not as fast left to right but up and down that thing goes fast. So there's a little bit of delay, you have to get good at the timing of it, so I just hit over left and you'll see it takes a little bit for it to turn. Alright, so I'm just going to walk around and uh, see how it detects me and how long it takes to send me a notification. You can see there in the top right hand corner a little uh, person came up so it detected a person, which is good. I guess I'm human after all. All right, so I just gave it a couple minutes. I'm gonna walk about 10 yards out and walk in front of it here. And we'll just see how long it takes before it sends me a notification. And I'm in the center of it now. And there it is. So uh, it took like a few seconds. Uh, again, I don't have great reception here, so it probably takes a little bit longer but uh, the fact that I don't have a good reception and it's still sending me the info is awesome. So then to see what just happened, you open up your app 
and then make sure you're on the correct camera and hit playback and once we go into playback it takes a minute for all these videos to load and of course I have a bunch from opening this today and let's go to the very last one and it shows a little person icon it's 13 seconds long and then it gives you the time so if you highlight that and hit play there it is so it, it picked me up about halfway through the frame and it's playing it very slow here and choppy because I don't have good internet uh, reception here so I got you know into the frame pretty good before uh, it started recording and one thing I need to mention on this camera is that it is designed only to take video when it's detecting motion once it detects motion until it stops detecting motion uh, this is not constantly running that's more of a Wi-Fi camera if you're looking for more of a security camera at your house then you probably want a Wi-Fi but this is cellular and it's only recording once it detects motion all right, so I ended up throwing the solar panel on there just so you can get an idea of what it looks like. And like I said, with that long cord to give you, uh, I would probably, in this case, put it up pretty high. Uh, it makes it less noticeable that way also, and just a little harder to steal. So I just wanted to give you an idea. If you go to the, the PTZ button here, you click that, uh, just how far it goes. So I'm going to hit down. And it goes straight down, almost backwards a little bit and then we'll bring it back up and that's as high up as it goes and then left and right I'm pretty sure you can look at the tree right behind you so it goes it goes completely around 360 degrees so I feel like I should just point out that it does not rotate completely around in circles so it'll go completely backwards and then stop and then to get back around you you know have to go all the way back around again a couple things i want to point out on the app real quick that i didn't really touch on before that are pretty important uh, so if you open your app and select your camera and on the top here you hit the little gear button to get into your settings if you scroll down here a little bit to where it says camera recording if you click on that there's an option in here that says post motion record duration uh, that's something you might want to play with. Um, I turn mine up to 15 seconds and what that means it will keep recording 15 seconds or however long you set it after it detects motion and like I said earlier you know when a deer's in there feeding in a food plot or something and sometimes it stops uh, the camera will shut off. This way it, it'll keep rolling for however long you set it after it, it stops detecting motion. And then back out to the camera itself, I'm going to hit play over cellular data. Right here, this little button where it says mid right now, um, there's three options once you click that. There's fluent, balanced, and four megapixel. The four megapixel is your highest 2K resolution. The video quality is just phenomenal, but you do burn up a lot more of your plan when you have it set at that. I usually keep it at balanced, but that's also why. I decided to switch my SIM card and went with FlexiBoom. I, I can touch on that real quick just because I know that can be sort of confusing. But as you can see right now it's burning you know, 2 megs a second almost at the top here. You can see the kilobytes per second. If I hit the 4 megapixel button here you can watch that jump up to well over 2 and there's 2.5 almost 3 megs a second. So with the Flexi Boom data plan, uh, it gives me two gigs a month. Uh, I pay for the whole year. It's just it's just easier that way. Uh, so you, you're looking at a little over eight dollars a month, and we get two gigs each month, which is plenty, and will allow you to use that uh, four megapixel option a lot more often. So you'll go to the Flexi Boom website, and I'll leave links in the description for all this stuff. And you're going to put your SIM card number down at the bottom and hit search. And this op it finds your card. It tells you how much data you used and how much you have left, and then your plans. So when you order uh, a card you're going to get 300 megs when it arrives and that'll probably get you through the first month and then they will send you an email and basically bill you from from that email you'll just pay for it and like I said uh, 
I do it by the year, so you do it once and you're done, which in the end is a little bit more expensive to do it month by month. So you get it cheaper to just pay for it by the year. Well, that's basically it, guys. I uh, have a lot of fun with this camera. I haven't had it out very long to really get uh, critters walking around, um, so I'm gonna close this video off with some sample footage so it gives you an idea of you know what you're looking at and of course the live view feature is just awesome if you have this set up you know over a food plot it doesn't matter you know how far away something is you can just you know log in look around and you know see what's out in the field at that moment i really appreciate you guys watching and really if you have any questions i do my best to answer all of them but i hope to see you next time right here on jace outdoors